Good evening, everyone. Today is the uh, 9th of uh, November, and we're going to be talking about stress and kids. And I think it's an important topic. Many of us have, um, I've heard some adults sometimes saying, well, adults have more stress, and they may actually have more stress because we have more things on our plate. Of course, when you're a kid, you're mostly worried about, I don't know, your friends, your uh, teachers, your schoolwork, maybe your parents. Uh, your pets. And as we grow into adulthood, we have a million things. How are we going to pay the rent? Um, does somebody love us or not? Um, how is our, how are our relationships going? Uh, political elections, there's a million different things to worry about. And so I think, um, yes, I, I, I agree with you that um, adults have more stress. However, we also have more experience, more life experience, and that can be a real game changer. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of different stories that, that have come across my desk just recently, which will kind of point this up. And when we think about kids and stress, I want you to really think about young people because sometimes young people, we assume that they have a certain body of knowledge that they just don't have, and they don't have the experience that we have. They may be living through some of these things for the first time, and I think it's important for us to step back maybe and say, okay, well, they never learned this before and to begin to teach them. And I think um, there's enough, even in places like um, the Bible, it says we want to lead people in a proper direction and really be teachers of them. And that it's a, um, it's a, it's a great fault actually to not lead young people gently but firmly into the correct direction so they can begin to make good decisions. I know sometimes as adults, we tend to think, well, whatever, I can't, I can't influence them. But I would, I would say, keep talking, keep the lines of communication open. And it really, really is important. Many of you know that I have um, a lot of nieces and nephews, about 25 actually. Um, most of them come from my husband's side of the family because he's from a, a, a large family. But because we didn't have our own kids for a long time, we were married many years before our own children were born. I'm very close to those kids. And some of them, um, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to admit, are over the age of 30. So they're really young adults. Some of them are married. Some of them have their own families. But I still feel very attached to them. And sometimes I'll get the opportunity to actually sit with them and chat and just have the conversation about what's going on. And you hear all different sorts of things and somehow um, I can reach back into my memory. Many of them were not born when I met my husband. So I've had the opportunity to see them kind of from babyhood and onward. A couple of them were born about, uh, of the 25, I wanna say maybe five were born before I met my husband, but the other 20 um, came onto the scene after I was on the scene. And so it's, it's a really good thing. And I, I've been very close to my nieces and nephews. As you know, I'm close to my kids, but I, I really, I like that, that, I don't know, that apostolate of working and talking to young people and helping them and encouraging them because they really do need so much encouragement. They hear a lot of different things out there. We wanna make sure that um, they're, hearing some, they're hearing a message of goodness and graciousness always. So um, I'm hearing from a lot of you. Betty says, hi. Saul Kim says, hi, hi. Hey, Benjamin. Um, I wanna say hi to our new people. I don't know if we have anybody new on the line today, but if you're new, um, please let me know in the chat. I'd really love to say hi and acknowledge you. We always love for new people to be here. If you're a parent, let me know because I think it's important that we speak directly to parents today. I know that they're, um, sometimes we get, we start fretting or we get distressed and I'm here to say, have courage. You're going to be able to do this and, and you're okay. And you're uniquely equipped to teach and train the child that was given to you. So you are uniquely equipped. So that's that's the good news, right? Okay, so um, Lee Wen says, um, adults have the adaptability and various coping mechanism. Children or teens may not have that maturity. I use balance and adaptive all the time for my five-year-old. That's great, Lee Wen. And um, a, a few of you may remember that uh, about a week ago, I think it was a week ago, maybe two, we talked about the mind mood kit. I don't want you to ignore the mind mood kit. I think that it's an important um, uh, 
group of products in your arsenal. I want you to ha actually have, the, have it available for you. But I also want you to think about specialty items. And we're gonna talk specifically about kids and maybe what you can do. Um, Olivia says she's a parent with three kids. Wow, that's terrific. That's quite a blessing. Um, thank you, Olivia. And Doreen says um, her kids like wild orange. Yes. You want to go with what your kids like. Try not to force essential oils on them that they don't like. I mean, I know sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes we have to give them something that they don't like. That's our role as parents. But um, in general, we want to try to give kids that opportunity to pick what they like because then they're going to be uh, more inclined to use essential oils and to just um, and to and to keep using them and to stay using something natural. Okay, so I'm actually going to um, share a couple of things with you. Want to make sure that everybody is. I think we're we're about halfway to full, so I want to um, get started because we do have quite a few things that I want to share with you, and I hope you um, I hope you find it useful. Where's our chat here? Let's see if we can find our chat. Yep, there's our chat. Great. And we want to make sure that we, um, whoops. Oops, 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 oops. Sorry, folks, having a little bit of uh, technical. There we go. And I also want to make sure that I can see who is entering because that's really important. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to get rid of the waiting room. It's a little bit cumbersome, but for the time being, we have a waiting room. And so I, um, throughout the presentation, I'm kind of letting people into the waiting room. So if you um, are in the waiting room and you can't hear me yet, don't worry, you'll be able to hear me soon. And um, if you, or you know somebody who's in the waiting room, obviously. Um, Olivia says, recently I used balance on my autistic son and it works really well and he's more calm and sleeps well. That's a beautiful testimonial. Thank you, Olivia. Thanks for sharing that with us. Okay, so let's talk about mind mood support for children. And um, unusual topic, we haven't really done this before. Sometimes we have um, uh, some work, we talk about kids sometimes, but not always, but I wanna make sure that we are uh, clearly understanding that kids have stress just like we do. Um, we have when one of the things I want you to think about is the great thing about doTERRA is that you can get um, wellness delivered straight to your door. So part of the issue that we have as parents is that we get frazzled. We have a lot of things on our plate. Maybe we forget to get something, but with doTERRA, it's delivered right to our door. So if you are on an LRP program and you are getting these products on a regular basis, this is your time to really begin to think about, okay, what is it that my kids need? Let's think about those specialty things. Um, the mind mood kit, as we talked about earlier, which I mentioned here, and I have mentioned in the past, and if you look below, you can see, for those of you who are watching this record, they're watching the recording, you can see the recording of the Mind Mood Kit that I did um, a couple of weeks ago. You'll get a new collection of products specifically selected to help your mind and mood and body just unwind. And sometimes we need to unwind, right? And these special collections are gonna contain some really powerful tools that can you, you can use to create an uplifting environment that helps you feel centered no matter what life throws your way. Okay, so kids, let's talk about it. This is really the whole child, the mind, the mood, and the spirit. The body, we take care of their bodies. We help them to get take baths and we help them to eat enough. And that's always our first priority, their body, but their mind, mood, and spirit, we want to make sure that we're protecting that and keeping it in keeping it alive. So uh, number one, healthy students are better learners. And I know from experience that many parents Parents, especially some of the parents that are on here are super concerned with how well their child is going to do in school. That's a really important thing. And as we go into exams, many parents are fretting. They're helping their kids to revise. They're sending their kids to tuition schools. Um, is this your child with their head down on a book? We also know that health-related factors such as hunger, physical and emotional abuse, and chronic illness can lead to poor school performances. Now, I would, I would 
uh, venture to say that probably anybody who's listening to this call probably is not experiencing that with their children. However, we may have um, people that we know or people in our community that are experiencing this and we wanna be able to help them also. Academic success is an excellent indicator for overall well-being of youth and a primary predictor and determinant of adult health outcomes. So we're not just talking about um, how will they do in their life? Are they successful? Do they get a good job? Do they marry someone? Do they, we're talking about their health outcomes. So how well they do in school actually ha is a predictor of how well they will, how healthy they will be. And I think nationally, you've heard about this, maybe even internationally, that people with higher levels of education tend to be healthier. They make better choices. So let's keep going there. Leading um, national education organizations recognize the close relationship between health and education, as well as the need to foster health and well being within the educational environment for all students. Okay, so this is the new reality, right? Schools the right place for a healthy start. Sometimes I know it's difficult. We want to be able to send them and have them be in just in a place where they can be with all their friends. But for right now, this is what's going on. We've got that little girl right in the front putting on her mask and then everybody's sitting kind of in a row behind her. This is just the new normal. It's just the normal for now. So let's, let's keep going. Schools do play a critical role in promoting the health and safety of young people and helping them establish lifelong healthy behaviors. Research has also shown that school health programs can reduce the prevalence of health risk factors. So risky behavior, less likely with kids that are good studiers, right, among young people and have a positive effect on academic performance. Well, that, that kind of we know. If they stay in school, they're more likely to do a good job. Scientific reviews have documented that school health programs can have positive effects on educational outcomes and risk behaviors, right, super important, and um, programs that are designed to improve academic performance are increasingly Im recognized as important public health interventions. Well, who would have thought that? That eventually we would say, you know what? It's important for us to, um, to keep our kids smart and that's what's also gonna keep them healthy kind, kind of development. Many of you have seen this before, this uh, the health pyramid. So starting on the bottom with eat right and exercise, it applies to kids too. And then rest and manage stress, reducing toxic load, informed self-care. In this case, it happens to do with parents being informed about their health, their, their kids' self-care and knowing when to kind of intervene and maybe when to just wait, and then proactive medical care. So when needed, yes, they absolutely should go to a doctor. And if you're not sure what they, what's, what's troubling them, especially physically, you wanna make sure that you give them the opportunity to go to a health professional and get diagnosed. I always tell people, get a diagnosis, and then we can talk about essential oils. Okay. Um, so when you talk about a kid's brain, you talk about what's going on in their head, it's just a little bit of everything, just like us. So everything from li library to school to their friends, homework, scary things, maybe recess. Um, okay, so here's my, que here's my question to everybody outside of the U.S. When little kids, so say five and six, go out um, in the middle of the day to play in a yard or something, is it called recess or is it called something else? So let me know, want to hear in the chat, is it called recess like it is here in the US or is it called something else? Megan says recess, okay, great. And then how old are you when recess stops? That's what I want to know. If you're outside of the US, how old are you when recess stops? So you can see in this particular brain, there's everything from yummy, right? With the cookie at the bottom to sad. Maybe their pet died. Maybe a friend is not talking to them. They've got to practice their violin or whatever that is, the cello. They're thirsty. They're thinking about sharks and spooky ghosts. A little bit of everything, right? Just like us, just on a lower level. And you, I don't know if you can think back to when you were a child. Some of you are super young. I know you can, or you have active imaginations or really good memories. Um, remember some of the things that worried you when you were a kid? I mean, I can remember some of the things that worried me and now I think, really? But 
that's the way it was. So just, and some of them were, some of them were legitimate. Some, I can, I can honestly say that some of the things that worried me were legitimate. And it was kind of scary, even for an adult, when I think back of it, like, here comes to my eye. Oh, okay. So um, each of your child's hundred billion brain cells starts like the circular neuron here. As a child is exposed to a variety of stimulating experiences, each cell is capable of sprouting up to 20,000 different branches to store the new information. In this way, the child is literally growing his or her brain. Um, we also know that all those little tendrils that are at the end there, those are called the, I think they're called the dendrites. Those actually grow out or get more robust with exercise. Yes, with exercise. So encourage your child to be active. And this is true even in adulthood, my friends. Those little tendrils at the end can actually shrink back if we don't continue to exercise our bodies. If we get kind of complacent or lazy or we just sit in a chair all day reading instead of getting up and out. So Betty's saying us till year 12, then no more resource. Now working too busy and also forgot to take a break. Yeah, we, we wanna make sure that we get out there and encourage our, our children to get out there. I know sometimes during the day, I'll be sitting at my desk for a while and I'll think, when was the last time I stood up? I actually have a little doohickey on my watch that will go, time to stand, time to stand, which is actually a good thing because I'll, I'll get really engrossed or start making phone calls and I won't stand up at all. Even if I get up to stand up and kind of walk around while I'm talking, it's a good thing. And then later on, I can go out or maybe earlier in the morning, I can go out and do my exercise. Okay. So I'm going to give you five tips so you can get out your pen and pencil. You can get out, uh, you can take screenshots if you wish for parents of younger children who want to help their brains develop and help them to handle stress. So first I want to talk about the trifecta of brain development. Okay. So all of you who have children who are going into and let me know in the chat how many of you have a kid who's going into exams now i'm one how many of you have a, a kid who is going into exams now and this could be a college age student doesn't matter could be a graduate student but you have a child a uh, person who you take care of that's going into exams now oh marcia says mine glendare says me grade seven anybody else danielle says yes grade four Mine are in grades, I guess, 13. So first year uni and fourth year uni. Uh, Shuli says, daughter having O-level exams. Oh my gosh, that's really stressful. Um, Lydia says, mine will be next month. Uh, Yahwe says, me, uni year one and year two. I know Yahwe, tough, it's really tough. And they really stress. Rose says, my nephew. Um, Olivia says, yes, grade five. Doreen says, all the best to all your children. Thank you, Doreen. Anybody else, children going in, going through exams in the next couple of weeks, this is the message. And do you know somebody whose child is going through exams, right? Support them, right? Help them to see why these things are important. Catherine says, my niece, year eight, okay? That's a stressful year because that's when they go into secondary, right? After year eight. Okay, so let's keep, whoops, let's talk about the trifecta of brain development. Tip number one, toxic chemical avoidance. This is really easy if you're using doTERRA, I have to say, because we, we just reduce the toxic load so much. If we're using things like the um, uh, foaming hand soap and the laundry detergent and the spray, the on guard sprays, if we're making our own household cleaners, we can reduce that toxic load so much. And children are very porous. They're very, um, you're gonna see a slide later on that talks about why it's important to reduce their chemical load. So always think about whenever you're adding something to your daily routine or to the routine of your household, how will my child absorb this? Okay, tip number two, healthy foods which help feed the brain. Okay, one of the biggest foods that feeds the brain are fish oil. Do we have that available? We absolutely do. We have children's vitamins and we have children's uh, fish oil, both of which can be taken on a daily basis and can easily be incorporated into a child's diet. So if you um, do not have that available in your market, you should pursue it in, for NFR in the U.S. market because children's vitamins are available through doTERRA and they're a wonderful way for you to add in nutrients, vitamins and nutrients into your child's diet. But number one on the hit parade is 
fish oil, just getting that fish oil into their, into their system on a regular basis. It can also mean providing them with um, a diet that is rich in sources, and that can be things like nuts, excuse me, and seeds and also fish so that they can um, get some of those fatty oils. We'll make sure that kids get lots of fats into their diet because those fats are the things that really help to support the brain. Tip number three, develop mentally stimulating activities. Don't allow your kid, oh, sorry, Glendare says, sorry, Lena, what's NFR newbie here? Thank you, Glendare. So NFR is not for resale. And if you live outside of the United States, you can purchase things on the US website and would be called not for resale, which basically means you'll be able to buy it and it will be sent to your home, but you can't buy bunches and bunches of it and resell it. So it's not for resale, but you can use it for, for personal use until those things are um, available in your market. Um, thanks for asking that question. That's a good one. Okay, um, for example, a, playing with toys that allow for creative outcomes. So toys that have sort of the same outcome every time, they must go in a certain path or they must answer a question in the same, in the same way every time to be able to get the right answer. Video games come to mind um, when I think about that are less creative and less brain developing. Um, things like when they're really little, blocks, trains, dolls, when they get to be a little bit uh, bigger, anything, any sort of puzzles or things that are more creatively uh, interactive. The, um, I know one of the things that my kids always love to do when they were sort of in that, those middle school years were some of those solve the mystery type of thing and they had different, um, different outcomes and then they could talk it out or they could play cards are another one. So just plain old playing cards, helping them to strategize. Mahjong, if you're a Mahjong player, then you can help them. That's one of the things that we used to do here. My kids are actually dying to get back and play Mahjong. Um, I taught them, but my niece taught me. I have two nieces that play. Uh, both of them spent some time um, on uh, junior year away programs in China. And the way it came back, they taught me and I taught my kids. And those are great strategy games. You want to play dough. Thank you, Francisca. That's a great thing. Anybody else have uh, a suggestion for creative games, whether it's little kids, medium sized kids, or college age kids? Help them to get off of social media. It really is a huge stressor. I was on the phone last night. Um, Zi Yang says, uh, Haha, Lindy, you're better than me. I don't know how to play. Okay. Next time I come, I keep saying this, next time I come, we're going to have a game. I don't know about money because I don't really bet with my kids, but I don't know. Teach me. I'd love to get better. Um, the cool thing. Uh, so, uh, yes, I was on the phone with my daughter, on the phone with my daughter, and she was talking about the stress after the U.S. elections. And let me just say on a personal note, um, I'm actually just so disappointed in not so much the outcome of the election is disappointing to me because of all of the fraud and the allegations of malfeasance that have been leveled at all levels and the inability of our government to be able to even count the ballots. It's just embarrassing, folks. It really is. And it makes me ashamed to say that this is such a you know, we talk about being a democratic republic and being a, a leader among nations, and yet we can't ho hold a general election, a presidential election that isn't rife with just all sorts of problems. It is, it's very disturbing to me. And so I, it's, it's seeping down to all levels. So let's say, um, I was on the phone with my daughter yesterday and she was saying she's very stressed with social media and so on. And I said to her, and this is a conversation we've had before, remove the social media apps from your phone so that it's harder for you to pop on. And I know what starts happening. You take it off and then you put it back on and then you take it off and then you put it back on. Um, we want to make sure that um, they have ways of coping with stress, and it doesn't mean getting going down the rabbit hole of the television of the telephone or the television. It's feeding them a message that maybe they don't need to be fed. They need to be able to talk to other people, people that they trust, people that can kind of guide them through. And so, when we talk about stress and we talk about kids. 
um, we want to make sure that they're having conversations with us and we're influencing them with our words, with our deeds, with just being with them and not allowing them to just be influenced by media because this can be very problematic. Um, a funny story, when my daughter was about, she wasn't that little, I want to say she was between 10 and 12, we were traveling with her and my, and my son, and we had gone to visit a very small town, I think in upstate New York, and my husband said, or I said, kind of offhandedly that this was such a small town, that at, and at the night they rolled up the sidewalks, and so you've heard that expression before, I'm sure all of you have heard it, roll up the sidewalks, my daughter turned to me very seriously and said, do they have a special machine for that? Now, you could say, well, that's ridiculous, but she had obviously never heard that expression before, didn't know what it meant. And so when we talk to our kids, sometimes we just assume that they understand things. They're processing and learning. And so we want to make sure that they do under, and that's kind of a funny example, but I'm sure there's much more severe examples um, uh, of this. Um, playing with toys that allow for creative outcomes. We talked a little bit about that, especially true in younger children who are working on building cognitive and fine motor skills. So um, I've got a, a couple of people that are getting on that are saying, um, play bing Rose says, play bingo. Yes, great idea. Um, Doreen says, DIY slime works pretty well with her kids. Danielle says, ageless grace and chair yoga for the brain. She teaches both. Uh, Z says, cooking and baking together if the parent has time to do it. Yes, those are great things to do with your kids. Betty says, among us, a game with imposter that kill the crewmate, fun distress game, cute. And Lydia says, we do gardening. The kids love to find the bugs and worms. These are great suggestions. Let's talk a little bit about fine motor skills. When kids are start, first starting to develop, many of them don't have the greatest fine motor skills. My son, um, when he was in uh, pre-K and K, kinder, um, just really terrible motor skills. He would pick up the pencil and it would just drop right out of his hand. And so um, we really started working for, with him because we figured, how is he gonna write? How is he never wanted to pick up a crayon? Nothing. But doing things like, um, pinching motions, maybe working with uh, tweezers. Um, the other thing he loved to do was work with a magnifying glass where you have to kind of hold it like this. Little stamps so you can stamp them. Anything where they begin to hold and pinch is a really good thing. They develop fine motor skills. Ask them to pick up beans or peas from one dish and bring them to another. You can ask them to count them. All of those things are one. Piano lessons. Yes, Glendare. My son never wanted to sit down at the piano, but I I do think we gave him piano lessons and I do think that they help, but anything that allows them that kind of manual dexterity and that repetitive motion can be very good, but help them to, to develop those fine motor skills. Um, it will help with their handwriting. And of course, writing and writing and writing and repeating, you know, lines and lines and lines can be very good, but can also be kind of boring. So you want to help them in whatever way you can. Working with Play-Doh, somebody mentioned Play-Doh can also be good because that's that kind of squeezing, pinching motion. Okay, um, number four, use essential oils in appropriate amounts. When I talk about appropriate amounts, I always want you to remember that kids are not just little adults. Um, you and invariably, I would always suggest starting with only one drops when we're talking about kids and using dilution charts as necessary. We'll be providing some dilution charts either below or in some of the comments or on, especially on now our uh, Facebook page. There are ways for you to dilute essential oils. Many of them come pre-diluted, but don't just assume because they are, I don't know, half your body weight that they're able to process half of the essential oils that you can process as an adult. I know I'll probably get the, um, the question, uh, what about um, adult supplements? Now, my, my rule of thumb is usually 100 pounds, which I think is uh, 35 kilos. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if your child has reached the age of 12 or 35 kilos or both, they should be able to handle um, the lower dosage of, a, um, of an adult uh, supplement. 
You want to make sure that they're able to swallow capsules. There's a lot of if, if, ifs that you want to be able, and you know your own child. So um, of my two children, my daughter was never able to swallow capsules, even if she, after she was 15 and 17 and 18, it was just really hard for her. And I think it was kind of a mental thing. I think I, I probably put too much pressure on her, I admit. Um, my son, on the other hand, just bloop and could swallow things down right away didn't really even think about it. And so that was a big difference between the two of them. I was continuing to give her essential oils on a spoon with honey in water long after I had um, started giving capsules and swallowables to my son. Um, Glendare asks, are the dilution ratio in kids collection already safe for babies? We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, Betty says 45 kilos is a hundred pounds. Okay, so 45 kilos, thank you. Um, uh, and then Lydia says, do, do, do the capsules like LIOV not allowed for the kids below 12? It's not that they're not allowed. You have to know your size of your child. If your child is small of stature, 12 may not be the right age. So I don't want to say 12 and above, right? But if you have, like we've talked many times on here about my son, my son's always been giant size. We used to call him baby Huey. He's always just been a big kid. So he reached 45 kilos before his sister, who's three years older than him. Go figure, just the way it is. So you have to decide, okay, how big is your child? If you have a very small petite child, then you really wanna be mindful. Now, I was in um, uh, Vietnam, I think I've mentioned this before, and I actually met a, a full grown lady who was only 40 kilos. Now that is an extremely low weight for a, an adult woman. She was very uh, small and petite of stature. You want to be mindful if you yourself are petite of stature, how big are your kids? So just, just be monitoring that. That's what I always talk about. How about the touch series? We're going to talk about the touch series also, but I want to make sure we keep going because we've got a, a couple, at least one more tip. And tip number five is patience and repetition. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first came to Essential Oils, I was very confused and there were some oils that I loved and some oils that I hated. And many of you know that I used to use a different brand and that I used it for a long time and so did my kids. And then we came over to doTERRA. There was a whole bunch of transition going on and smelling different things and saying, this doesn't smell like the other one or I don't like the way this smells. It's taken a while for us to really, now seven years later, of course, we smell everything, we use everything. We have our favorites, of course, but that idea that you're going to immediately introduce a, an essential oil to, the ki to a kid and they're going to love it and use it and want to incorporate right away, maybe not. I'm not so sure. So just please be patient with them and reintroduce things from time to time. To a certain extent, it's like foods. They may be able to um, eat something the first time, but they may also feel like, well, I don't know if I really loved that. And adults are the same way. So we want to make sure that we're patient with them and repeating things. So um, I want you also to reflect that in this age of information and social media overload, we have to be mindful of face-to-face -face connection and of deepening relationships, as well as having quiet time for ourselves. Sometimes as parents, we lose our cool because we ourselves can't get away and just kind of de-stress in a quiet place. Sometimes it's nice to just take a walk, appreciate nature, or connect with a friend. I was actually on a wonderful Zoom call on a Friday night, I think it was, Friday, Friday night, maybe Thursday, about um, a good friend invited me, um, a, a lady who is a decorator, and her talk was about creating intimate spaces, creating intimate spaces. And it's interesting because we've spent so much time indoors, kind of alone, right? Or all smushed together because we can't get out. And where are those spaces in our homes where we can sit down, just maybe two parents, right? And have, I don't know, a cup of coffee together or a glass of wine and unwind a little bit and allow our kids to be maybe off in another part of our apartment so that we can have that sense of intimacy and connection. And maybe our kids need a quiet place that doesn't mean that they're locked up in their room, but that they can go and they can read a book or they can do something quiet 
quietly. Maybe some sort of um, crafts are a wonderful thing also for just relaxing and unwinding. I know when uh, many of you know that I'm, a, I'm an only child and I did a lot of crafts when I was a kid, just everything from sewing to knitting to embroidery. Um, I know that was kind of the time that people did a lot of crafts, but I'm very grateful that I did that. I think it kind of kept me out of trouble I think it formed me and it also gave me a sense of just being in, engrossed in a certain task and even later on when I was at university and I was going through really tough exams when I would take breaks I would actually knit and I think that 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 helped me also to kind of keep my stress level down um, just keep it in mind when you're talking about your kids um, Glendare says, um, bathroom warm bath with adaptive oil. Absolutely, if you can get a hold of the adaptive oil. I know that every day I'm getting notifications that some of the Christmas products are sold out. I did get a couple of them already. So, and I have to say they're really super cute. I got the little uh, flower diffuser. I forgot what it's called. I think, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's called. It looks like a little cactus blossom, so sweet. And then I also got one set of the um, oils from the, 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 bio, the biblical oils. Um, okay, so here's our, here are our five tips. The trifecta first, toxic chemical avoidance, healthy foods that help the brain, developmentally stimulating activities, then essential oils in appropriate amounts, patience and repetition. Okay, so now what information about children's health do most people commonly get wrong? That's my question. I'm gonna give you a minute. What's the information? What information about children's health do most people commonly get wrong? Ready, go. I'm gonna give you a minute. I'm gonna pick up my pen. That's why I'm getting off my chair. Anybody know? Nobody's saying. <gasps> You're all so quiet. What happened? Tell me. Eczema, fever, nope. I know it's kind of interesting when you hear what it is. Growing pains. Hungry, hungry is a good guess. Kids stress, stress, nutrition, buy toys, ha ha ha, yes, exactly. Um, fat are always healthy, okay, good. Vitamins, mm, nope, nobody's gotten it so far. It's an interesting one, folks. They are happy, not enough sleep, mental, digestion, sleep, keep going. It's something that we tend to think about a lot now during um, the pandemic. Not enough water. Oh, that's a good one, Yahweh. Flu, anxiety, coughing, immunity. Okay, yeah, Ling Ling, you're on the right track, but keep going. Something specific, always on the screen. Yeah, these are all great. These are all great. <laughs> Insanity, okay. Adelina, you're very funny. I like that one. <laughs> Are you almost ready? I'm going to give you one more minute. Hygiene. Peggy, you hit it on the nose. Hygiene. Activities to be and the thing that they and the th what does it have to do with? Peggy, uh, let me know your last name because I want to make sure that you get a prize today. That's really great. You can type it to me privately. Okay, hygiene, but specifically germs versus dirt, okay? People sometimes make an incorrect distinction between germs and toxins when they're thinking about things that are dirty. I have no problem with kids go being exposed to dirt from a farm, right? Going outside, going into a park, digging in the dirt, which helps grow a healthy gut biome. 
microbiome, right? But even germs from other kids after they've passed the most delicate first few months of life, right? So kids in small doses getting together, all those are healthy for the immune system. It's the city toxins, the big toxins, the COVIDs that we're worried about. And that's the real reason to wash your child's hands before they eat. So don't get crazy if your kid has a little smudge on their face or they have some chocolate or they look a little bit grimy. Grime is okay. What we're talking about is those heavy duty germs and toxins. So when they, um, when you get a receipt at a, at a store and it's got that kind of slimy quality to it, it's very slippery. That's a chemical additive that's added onto the paper. Don't let your kid put that in their mouth, right? That's the kind of toxins that we want to sort of help them to avoid. Helping them to avoid all different sorts of sprays. If you're walking in your supermarket or your pharmacy and you smell very strong, overpowering perfumes, that probably means a toxic chemical soup. When you go through that aisle where all of the cleaners and, and different sorts of things are, those are all toxins that you want to get away from. So germs versus dirt and their immunity, their hygiene, their immunity is based on their hygiene, but also allow them to develop that strong gut microbiome. That was that was a great, you all great, guessed fabulous answers, really fabulous answers. Thank you, um, thank you, Peggy, for that, for kind of the, the winning guess there. Okay, so this is what we wanna think about when we think about our kids. Now this is, I'm assuming this boy is about 10 years old, but um, starting from the top, that they have an immature blood brain barrier. What does that mean? It can mean that things are getting in that really should, would not get in um, in an adult. So that barrier has not completely formed and solidified. They may be more, they're much more absorbent. They have a larger body surface area based on their age so that they're, they are actually, you know, their, their body is based on um, their size. You can see the BSA versus their age. It's just much larger than their, um, than their adult counterpoints. They have rapidly dividing cells because they are growing, which means that something that's introduced can easily be introduced into many cells at the same time. And then they have an immature um, immune system. Doesn't mean we have to keep them in a bubble. Doesn't mean we have to wrap, uh, wrap them in plastic wrap. It does mean, however, that we have to make sure that they are able to be exposed to certain things that allow them to get fortified and stronger and to stay away from things Things that are going to reduce their um, ability to fight infections and, and other things in the future. They have a higher metabolic rate. Who among us hasn't had a kid or known a kid that is just a whirling dervish, constantly running all over the place and just doing things all the time? They tend to have more energy. They move more. They move their bodies more. So their metabolic rate is higher. Their skin is thicker. Our skin tends to get thinner. Sorry, their skin is thinner. Our skin tends to get thicker as we get older, which is why it's more difficult for us sometimes as adults to absorb essential oils through our skin. And they have higher respiratory rates. They um, inhale and exhale at a higher rate. That means that they can get rid of toxins more easily, but it also means that they're in a place where there are a lot of toxins, they can absorb them more quickly. So keep this in mind when you're thinking about your kids. It is an important um, uh, distinction. So essential oils in the classroom, I don't know how many of your kids are actually in classrooms right now. Some of you are, some of you are not, but you wanna think about improving mood, focus, and sanitation. So move, focus, and sanitation. We're gonna talk about some products that I particularly love. And then we're gonna talk about a couple of things that you can do as a parent and maybe influencing your, the teachers of your kids. Love the doTERRA kids kit. The kit is $105 uh, dollars US wholesale with 90 PV. It does not include the Tamer. I know that this, this slide includes the Tamer, but it does not include the Tamer. Tamer is another about $20 US with I think 20 PV. Um, it may be a little bit less, but this kit 
hands down has everything that you could possibly want for your child. And I would consider using this really through young adulthood. It's a wonderful way for your kid to be able to identify a small group of oils that they can make their own choices. How many times have we felt as adults that we have choice overload, that we just have too many things to think about? I remember when I was a kid growing up, I think we had three brands of toothpaste and maybe that's dating me, but we had, I don't know, Colgate Crest and maybe something what's called Ultra Bright. I don't know if anybody remembers Ultra Bright. Um, and that was it. And you maybe got one or two flavors per toothpaste. Now I go into my uh, local pharmacy and they have 50 different brands or more or 50 different kinds. They have the gel and the paste and so on. And I'm using that as an example of we are just on brand and choice overload. And our kids are too. If we can allow them to pick from a smaller group, you probably don't want to show your kid your entire huge case of essential oils with 140 or more. It's too much for them, especially if they're small. But you can show them this. You can also show them the little, um, 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 I always forget that word, motif. Um, on the label, that is either the brain, the body, which is like the little person or the heart, so that they themselves can be able to make decisions and pull what they need for their own solutions. I think that's a, an appropriate, um, even a small child can do this. Now, icon, thank you, Betty. Um, so somebody was asking me earlier, how early can a child begin to use these oils? I would say from the, about the age of four and up, they can begin to use them themselves. You could maybe not leave them in their room constantly. You don't want to make sure that they, you're monitoring them. Um, but a child who is able to have access to these can see them, maybe can smell them at about the age of four and, and beyond that. Below the age of four, I'd like to see you personally applying the essential oils to them. So ages say two and three. And then when we're talking about babies, if you are a parent and you're applying the essential oils, you're really just applying them on the soles of the feet or just a small amount. And if you feel that the oil is too strong for a newborn, you could buy, be diluting it again. Use your good judgment. I know you know what to do. These are pre-diluted. They are, it, the expectation is they could be used directly on a small child. You can always repeat the application if necessary, um, but you uh, don't necessarily have to. You could apply just once and then apply perhaps again the following day. But keep this in mind when you're talking about um, this group of essential oils. Um, my, the, my top four for stress are the Thinker Blend, the Focus Blend, with um, vetiver, peppermint, clementine, rosemary in a base of fractionated coconut oil. Um, it says it all right there on the screen. You're going to keep it yourself or allow your child to keep it. If they're a little bit older, they can put that carabiner top. I'm sure you've seen that. Um, um, EK says her three-year-old loves to put tamer on her tummy by herself. Yep. Um, especially if they're um, maybe a little bit nervous. I maybe should have included tamer here. A lot of kids that have, have nervous energy or feel nervous are, um, they, they often experience it in their tummy. They'll say, I have a tummy ache. And it can be for anything. It can be from worry. It can be from anxiety. It can be from stress. They may not have the words that help them to say, I feel stressed or I feel anxious. They don't have that vocabulary, but they can begin to tell you about physical symptoms. And you can see the physical symptoms sometimes. Um, my daughter was really ner a nervous child when she was younger. And um, I don't know if I was as understanding as I needed to be. I didn't understand why she was so nervous. But one of the things that I did see was when I would leave the house, it was around about the time that cell phones were just starting to become popular. And um, she would call me repeatedly and ask me, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you coming home? When are you coming home? And um, it took her a while to feel, I think, confident. The other thing was at, in those days, my husband was traveling quite a lot. And I think the combination of maybe him being in the, out of the house so much and then me maybe going out at night or something. And I didn't do it a lot, but when I did, it really made her feel very distressed. And I realized now, many, many years later, that I could have probably done more to reassure her. I, at the time I was kind of thinking, it's gonna be fine, I'm just going out. But I realized for a little mind and a little, a little set of feelings, it, it can be stressful for them.
The other one that I love for kids is the Calmer blend um, with lavender, Kananga, Buddha wood, Roman chamomile, in a, again, in a base of fractionated coconut oil. I like ca um, Calmer before sleep, maybe before bed. It's not going to put your kid into a deep sleep, folks. That's what Calmer is all about. But Calmer is the thing that's going to help them get over the get over the bumps. Um, I remember that there we had we always had um, a serenity in the house, but sometimes a bottle of essential oils for a little kid is a little bit more difficult for them to manage if they're small. So that's why the the um, that's why the roll-ons are so wonderful. And there's the symbol of the brain. So you can use, um, they know that yes, my brain is hurting or my brain feels sad. The other one that I love is Steady, the grounding blend with amorous, balsam fir, coriander, and magnolia in a base of fractionated coconut oil. Okay, so here's the interesting thing. Steady is considered the grounding blend and we know that the grounding blend for uh, adults is balance. What's interesting is they're not necessarily, um, uh, is it, uh, they're not necessarily the same, they are not the same blend and you can see the ingredient list is not the same, but they work to do, they should have similar effects. Um, so Wendy says, uh, may I know if this is suitable for kids only? Actually, I recently, my one of my daughter's friends is having a lot of anxiety at schools. All of her classes have gone virtual. She's not able to live on campus. She's part of a sorority and the sorority is closed. It's just a whole confluence of factors. She's living at home with mom and dad. Her sister is not there because her sister is on campus. And I know she's under a lot of stress. And I was talking to my daughter about it. This is one of my daughter's dearest friends. And I said, can I send her something? And my daughter said, oh yes, she would love that. And I asked, so she's, the girl is 21 or 22. And I actually sent her a kid's kit because I thought, you know what? Sometimes we just need something that's soothing. And I think the kid's kit, because the blends are very simplified, the body is going to absorb them quickly and effectively. Now, if you found it wasn't strong enough or you needed more as an adult, you could always reapply. So you never have to worry, oh, well, I didn't get the effect that I wanted. It was too weak for me, let's say. Just apply it, just apply it more frequently or apply it over to greater area of your body. So for grounding blend, ordinarily, we would just apply it to the soles of our feet. So if I was gonna use balance in the morning, I would get up, put on my balance and then put my socks on. But let's say that steady applied to the soles of your feet as an adult is not quite enough. Could you apply it also to your pulse point over your heart, maybe on your shoulders? Could you apply it anywhere on your solar plexus? You know, there's a lot of places on the palms of your hands and breathe in. Could you pop off the top and stick it in your diffuser? There's a lot of ways to get additional um, exposure. Um, Glender says, I wish there's a knockout bottle blend that knocks them out when they're becoming crazy, kidding aside. I know. Um, sometimes they just, uh, kids have a lot of energy. We want to make sure that they're getting enough sleep, right? And sleeping within the same time frame every night. Lots of studies out there. I'm not going to go into kids and sleep. Maybe I'll do that on a different time, or we'll do a whole episode here about sleep. But you want to make sure that their circadian rhythms, their natural body rhythms are being honored. And sometimes if you haven't been honoring their body rhythms and now you decide to, at first it can seem like this doesn't work. But trust me when I say that it does work. When the sun starts going down, we begin to just decide, okay, let's turn down the TVs, shut off the phones, all the things that we need to do to really ease ourselves into that cycle of sleep. Um, last one that I love is the is Brave or the Courage Blend with wild orange, amorous, osmanthus, and cinnamon. Um, Brave smells a lot to me like um, uh, On Guard. It is not the On Guard blend, but it has that kind of cinnamon orange smell to me. I don't know about to anybody else, but I really love this blend. And it's something that I think you could carry with you on a regular basis or have, you know, I would love to have had this blend for my daughter and maybe some of the other blends as well when she was tiny, because I think that would have helped her. Also just the name Brave. It sounds like something you'd like to use that a kid would feel like, I'm going to use this. It's going to make me feel a little bit better. 
So I know that many of you are exposed to herbs on a regular basis and that depending on what your culture is, you may have used herbs, you may have seen or heard about herbs, you may be talking to parents that are using herbs either for themselves or for their, kitchen or for their children. You wanna make sure that they understand that the concentration of essential oils is much bolder than the concentration of herbs. So when we talk about taking an herb, a single drop of peppermint oil can be equivalent to 24 cups of peppermint tea. So that herbs are obviously dried plant material, whereas um, essential oils are concentrated because of the way that they are extracted. Um, the other thing you wanna think about when you're talking about oils versus oils, so the quality of oils, and this is a conversation that we should be having on a regular basis with the people that we know. Number one is we wanna make sure that um, we're not using those synthetic or perfume industrial oils that are becoming so much more pre prevalent when you walk into stores now. You just see tons of people blasting the words essential oils, but we know that that's not, um, those aren't the pure, really effective oils. And so that's this outer ring, ring, if you will. The next level are your food or your grass, uh, generally regarded as safe oils. Those are the ones that are gonna be in things like your toothpaste or chewing gum. Not bad for you, but also not therapeutic grade. They're not gonna be able to give you, a, help you with the effects um, that you want to elicit the effects that you want in your body. I've been brushing my teeth my whole life and I've never thought to myself, wow, this peppermint is really improving my mood or decreasing my inflammation. It's just brushing my teeth, that's about it. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers that story. Uh, Teresa, I know you're on the call this morning. You may remember the story. A long time ago, I did a, a, call, uh, a lecture. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. It's gotta be 10 years now. I did a lecture at a library and at the end I asked for questions. Um, and a man raised his hand and I said, yes. And he said, if I chew peppermint chewing gum, will I get the same results as using peppermint essential oil? And of course the answer is no, but it was an interesting question. I remember at the time thinking, uh, no, but you never know, that's what people are thinking. Okay, third one are therapeutic grade. They do have some health benefits. We know there are a couple of big brands out there that would fall into this category. I'm gonna skip over this really quickly, but then there's CPTG and that's uh, where doTERRA essential oils fall. And I love the fact that we're kind of that tiny dot in that big industrial bullseye, but that's really the place that you wanna reach that kind of that center level. Um, we know that CPTG essential oils are pure, safe, and potent. They have no um, artificial um, ingredients, fragrances, or fillers. They are be beyond organic, and they are verified as pure without foreign contaminants or pesticides. And they are potent because the plants are grown and harvested in their natural habitat. And if you haven't seen this map for a while, you know that our oils come from all over all over the world, really. There's so many different places and that um, if you're looking for an essential oil in its natural habitat, that's really where you're gonna find the, the, best, um, the, the best and most effective sense of oils. I love this little girl. She says, um, I'm telling you, my mom has a secret weapon for dreaded nap time called lavender essential oil. Every time she puts it on the bottom of my feet, I fall right asleep. It's horrible. But yes, we can continue to use essential oils. Um, even for things like dreaded nap time. Um, what do you say to people who say CPTG is just something doTERRA came up with that's patented to them? Um, I would say, <laughs> yes, that's true. But it also means um, I would ask them to compare CPTG with any other manufacturer out on the market. So if the qualifications that we're identifying in CPTG, which is what the ones I just laid out, ask them, it may, be it may be true for us, but take those qualifications and each and every oil that you, you know, look for in the market, do they have all of the things that we have? And if the answer is no, then you're basically eliminating them because they haven't hit a standard, a higher standard. So that's a great question, Glendare. Okay, essential oils in your classroom. Um, I would use these four, especially for kids, um, lavender or a calming blend to maintain a calm environment. Um, if you are homeschooling right now, and I know some of you are for different reasons, 
Consider lavender in your home for your kids. Peppermint, diffusing it during a test to keep students maintaining their focus. You can also have them, if a child is uh, going to school and gonna take a test, I, somebody was talking about O-levels, have them take a small cotton ball with them in a Ziploc bag and just have that cotton ball with them with the peppermint oil on them. They can also apply peppermint oil if it's not gonna bring their body temperature down too low. You don't want them to get chilly during the exam, but having just something available to them that they, can sniff and then keep going during the test. Um, wild orange for uplifting, energizing, and supporting a healthy immune system. And then on guard, of course, for diffusing at the start and end of each day to sanitize the room. So on test days, I would add peppermint to maintain energy, lavender to support a calming environment, and citrus to maintain focus, maybe in all three in a roller bottle. And um, I would say that supporting a calm environment especially is especially important on test days when stress and anxiety levels can be at their peak. As we know, we've heard many times some kids will say, um, I'm a great test taker, or I'm, my kid is a great test taker. Some kids, not so much. Some kids walk into the test chewing their nails, but they do okay. Others of them walk in there feeling defeated from the moment they, they get out of bed that morning. You wanna help all the different personalities, right? To come to their own personal best. Um, uh, Peggy, thank you for all that information. Um, I. You're going to pick up the, and so for those of you who don't know, we always have a gift at the end. We have a prize that we award at the end, and those prizes are actually picked up by our prize winners in Singapore. So if you're in Singapore, you're going to pick up the prize in Singapore. If you're outside of Singapore, um, I know that the lady who helps us with the prizes, Shu Lee, who I think is on the call, um, has been making some sort of arrangements so everybody can get their prizes. Um, I want to say thank you to our Presidential Diamond team. This was kind of a long call, but I think we went through a lot of interesting information and information that was different from what we've been talking about in the last few months. Um, you can always follow on um, social media. We are on Instagram. And this, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for having been here. Click the subscribe button to get um, more information every time we come out with a new video. And then ring the bell so that you can get um, notifications. I'm so happy that you're watching. Remember, you're amazing. We want to help you preserve the safe, your own safety and the safety and health of your family. And finally, thank you so much for being here and have a wonderful week. We're going to say farewell to our, um, we're going to say farewell to anyone who is on the, um, on on Facebook, I'm sorry, on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much for having been here. If you're on the live, stay on and we're gonna be awarding our prizes.